All right, I'm told the Chinese scientist who claims to have performed the world's first genetically engineered babies is speaking right now in Hong Kong. Let's listen in. For multiple rounds um, uh, in front consent with the scientists and uh, also with the team members. And uh, then under the normal IVF procedure. So um, collect eggs and then <clears throat> we inject casinate protein and get on a and if, sorry, how many eggs total between the seven couples? So uh, in total, we have uh, about 31 polar sets. But that number is the, yeah, it's 30, yeah, 30 embryo plus sets. That are yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So 30, 31 were injected. Uh, it's, it's more, I mean, what I mean, 30 it's developed to plus at stage. And with that, about 70% of the embryo were edited. 70% had biallelic editing or 70% had monolelic? And what was the percent mosaicism in those 30 embryos when you, well, that's right, you wouldn't know because you only took one cell. Yeah. yeah. So, and then, uh, okay, so, why did you decide on these two rather than the other 24? Uh, this, this couple happened to be first to be pregnant. Have you subsequently implanted the remaining in the six other couples? So it, uh, the clinical trial was paused due to the current situation. I have one other thought. Um, can you, I'm from the United States, so I'm not completely familiar with um, how the review process. So how did you go through, who did you discuss this trial with in terms of your supervisors, mentors, um, other people, in terms of getting feedback on the trial design, the consent process? Who, tell me sort of the scope of the team that was involved in designing this clinical trial. Okay. So when I start this, uh, even from the pre clinical study, uh, uh, I first talked to a couple of scientists and doctor to find out uh, CCR5 is the one to recommend. And uh, then uh, once I have uh, some early data on the pre clinical, I presented uh, in the Cold Spring Harbor lab meeting in New York in 2017, and uh, also in the UC Berkeley Genome Editing Conference. So some of the audience also in that conference too. So I, I get feedbacks, uh, positive feedbacks, and also criticisms, and also some constructive advices. Uh, and I continue to talk to not just scientists, but also the, the top ethicists in the United States at Stanford. Like Winnie Herbert as mentioned, multiple times talk. And uh, also I, I show my particular data to many scientists uh, visiting. Uh, when I started the uh, clinical trial for the, yeah, for the inferno consent, it's a, uh, we just, we take the NH guideline as a reference and uh, draft the inferno consent. And the later was reviewed by a US professor. Uh, and when the, it's a, a pregnant, uh, this inferno cancer was reviewed again, so we had a subsequent uh, a supplementary material for the inferno consent to add the, the long-term follow-on plan. Uh, and one, yeah, and also, let me, let me go to that. How many, how many people read the informed consent before you showed it to the family? How many people reviewed the informed consent and felt like it was appropriate? Uh, so outside of my team, there are about four people. And the, when this couple was in full consent, the, the, uh, it's, there's observer, uh, observer uh, from United States professor and also a Chinese professor in the Chinese Academy of Science. And were, it's well, audio recorded. Yeah. So on, on the informed consent issue, uh, was that the gained by a, a, an independent person talking to the patients or were you or your team involved in that process? 
directly. Mm. That's including the first round is uh, uh, team member uh, went to talk to the volunteer first for two hours. Uh, and then after about one month, mm -hmm. the volunteers came to Shenzhen. Mm -hmm. And I personally, together with the to another professor, uh, give up one hour and ten minutes inferring consent. But you were, so you were directly involved? I uh, directly involved. The, they were, because yeah. after one month, they actually yeah. bring out the papers, see off-target, CRISPR things, they already information that. All right, you were listening to the live interaction with the Chinese scientist who claims to have developed the world's first genetically edited babies. He was talking to scientists in Hong Kong. <laughs>